Regular program scheduled to bring you the following special report. The four Columbia astronauts are approaching the coast of California, coming home, having extended our reach into space. And now, Frank Reynolds. Good morning. As you see there, the dawn is coming up over the California desert, the same desert there at Edwards Air Force Base in California, where the astronauts will be landing in approximately 17 minutes or so from now. Right at this moment, and good morning, I am here at the other end of the country in Washington, D.C. We won't spend very much time here. We'll be getting out to uh, California and to Edwards Air Force Base very quickly. The uh, astronauts right now are over the Pacific. They are in the blackout. They're uh, coming in on the California coast. You see they're in their 80-second orbit with 17 minutes and uh, approximately 50 seconds or so to go before touchdown. We have another five minutes or so that will uh, elapse before they emerge from the loss of communications blackout as they come down through the Earth's atmosphere. But they're heading for California, and we want to go out there now to Edwards Air Force Base and Max Robinson. Max, uh, can you see anything out there? Well, actually, you can see quite a bit, uh, Frank, even though sunrise will occur uh, less than 10 minutes, so that is a little less than 10 minutes from now. Uh, light is beginning to come up. In fact, it's very beautiful, as you can see, where sunrise will occur in about uh, nine and a half minutes from now. And the shuttle will touch down on runway 22, that's the concrete one way, runway, seven minutes after sunrise. Gene Cernan, the veteran of three space missions, uh, two Apollos and one Gemini is with us to talk about this flight. Gene, one of the concerns has to be weather. The forecast is called for scattered clouds, and we've got a lot more than scattered clouds out here. Max, we've got a, a fairly thick overcast. John Young just reported uh, it's marginal whether or not they can see through it. So this is going to be a little unique. Uh, the, the crew actually will be on instruments part of the time, and I don't believe we'll see them here on the ground until after they make their turn into what we call final, or in the final phases of their landing below 16,000 feet. As far feet. as weather conditions, this is as bad as it's ever been for, uh, for Columbia. Well, but from a pilot's point of view, it's not really bad as such, but it is unique because we normally have had scattered uh, clouds or no clouds at all in the past. So what I'm hearing from you, you don't anticipate any problems? I, as I don't anticipate well. any problems. We, uh, it's a little different, but no problems. We problem. just won't be able to see as much as we would have been able you, to see. You and I large. probably won't see him when he goes over the top, because that could be spectacular this morning in the sunrise. And we'll be here for that. We and uh, the shuttle is coming in. Frank? All right, thank you, Max, and thank you, Gene. We'll be back to you very shortly. This has been a very successful mission in terms of the primary goal, which was, of course, to establish that the space shuttle is a uh, delivery vehicle. It carried two satellites into orbit, placed them successfully in orbit. The only disappointment, of course, was the failure to carry out the spacewalk by the two mission specialists yesterday. So there has been a triumph and also some disappointment. But now, of course, that's going to be forgotten in the glory of seeing them come back to Earth, and they'll be down in a very short time. Our coverage of Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in a moment. We've word that uh, communications has been reestablished between the spacecraft and the ground, so we're going to go to Lynn Scher at Mission Control in Houston. Lynn, they've just got the word they've emerged uh, from the blackout, right? Uh, yeah, they haven't had uh, quite the kind of conversation we're used to yet, but we'll be hearing that in just a few minutes. The picture you were just looking at was Roy Bridges. He is the Capcom for the landing. He is down in Mission Control, and he will be talking them down. Uh, let's listen in a little bit. We have uh, Roy Bridges talking to them now. 7,000 feet. Mach 11. Columbia Houston with you through Buckhorn. Configure AOS. Roger, configure AOS. We're in the first roll reverse. Roger. They're 440 miles away. And that's their first voice uh, voice contact. Uh, right, we got an AC overload. Nothing else on the uh, system. Looks like it's at overload center. Roger, Bob, and uh, we've checked, and your AC systems are all good. Okay. Lynn, how we take this for granted now? Remember all those anxious moments waiting for former <laughs> astronauts to come down and emerge from the blackout? I think you're right, Frank, but on the other hand, isn't a little part of you just tingling? Wouldn't you like to be out there watching it coming in? Oh, yes, and so would you. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, though. I've never seen it from the mission control point of view, and these guys, I expect, are going to be just as excited as they have every other time. We're only about 12 minutes away from touchdown now. They will cross the California coast just uh, Mach 9 at south of uh, Santa Barbara. Feet, range 331 miles at a speed of about 3,000 miles per hour. You might say they're coming like a bat out of space. 
or at us somewhere, Frank. Yeah. Everything looking good. <laughs> Frank, this has been an amazing mission, as you know well. Uh, this, for this, this mission, Columbia, the space shuttle was transformed into Columbia, the space truck, taking up satellites, delivering them, carrying freight, and doing just what it was supposed to, at least for the most part. We've put together a little, um, a little piece of tape that gives some of the highlights of that mission, beginning with the launch. One, zero, off. It began the way the flight planners had dreamed it a flawless launch for Columbia's fifth journey into space. And at first, there was only good health and good spirits for the four men in their machine. Just eight hours into their mission, they carried out their major objective, the deployment of the first commercial satellite from the shuttle's payload bay. With mission specialist Joe Allen at the cameras, his partner, Bill Lenore, activated the mechanisms to set the giant drum of electronics spinning, then sprung it out of the orbiter. It worked and the folks down in Mission Control celebrated the beginning of the shuttle as an operational vehicle. Aboard Columbia, Lenore playfully claimed his reward, some zero-gravity peanuts, and then they concentrated on the next task. This time, it was Lenore at the monitors and Joe Allen at the mobile launch pad, this time to send aloft a second satellite. It performed as perfectly as the first, with the help of a little musical license from the crew. It had become their new, unofficial motto. There was one setback, Lenore's bout with space sickness that put the space walk off a day. But then they all tumbled back into good spirits. Lenore is still barefoot and grasping footholds with his toes. Joe Allen, bare-legged. Joe, uh, I didn't know we packed the uh, tropical uniform. We're going over the desert. We just came across Africa and it was warm. Well, unfortunately, all those jokes and all the good spirits couldn't achieve the final item on their chore list. And, of course, that was the spacewalk that was meant to take place two days ago, put off to yesterday. It just didn't happen. Two mechanical failures in two two million dollar spacesuits made it not possible. So it was the first cancellation of an American spacewalk due to mechanical problems, due to hardware. And it was a pretty big disappointment, both for the emotional uh, the emotional high these guys were on, and also scientifically, the shuttle must have a spacewalk in order to complete its progress as part of its entire program. The big question now, when will they reschedule that spacewalk? It could be as early as uh, the sixth mission, which will go sometime late January, early February. In any event, it has to go before the following January, 1984, because at that point, a spacewalk is going to be required and a necessary part of the program. But that's really been the only disappointment uh, of this otherwise very, very perfect fifth mission of Columbia. Frank? Thank you, Lynn. They've crossed the California coastline now. I just want to give you some indication of how fast they're moving. Just a few seconds ago, I was handed this, 163 range. Just as I picked it up, I was handed another piece of paper that says range, 130 miles. So they're really moving. Let's get back out to California now to Edwards Air Force Base and Max Robinson. Max? Strange. Frank, of course, we're here with Gene Cernan. Gene, understand visibility exceeds seven miles, which is pretty good uh, visibility. Uh, that's that's excellent visibility at under these point. clouds. Where is Columbia at this point? Columbia should be coming right over here through this cloud cover. As I say, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see it. But About like Frank, miles out at Frank this point. said, it's probably within 100 miles now because she is uh, slowing down quite rapidly and yet still maintaining about four times the speed of sound. Now, there was a question as to whether the, the Columbia pilots, astronauts, would go automatic or manual, take charge of the shuttle in, in bringing it in. And that was a problem because they're landing on concrete runway 22 out here. And I understand that had to be automatic. Well, they'll take it uh, in automatic now, I believe, through the turn and through the clouds, monitoring their instrumentation, not being able to see the runway, remember, but monitoring their instrumentation. And then probably at around 2,500 feet, as they've done in the past, they'll take it over totally manually and land it uh, stick and rudder, as we we say in the flying Stick business. The winds are calm. The winds uh, are calm. It's a beautiful day. The cloud cover really gives us sort of just one more milestone in checking out the capability of the shuttle. Just as a scene set, uh, there are a lot fewer people out here to watch this particular landing of uh, STS-5 than there were any other mission. In fact, a half million people, 4th of July, the last STS-4, uh, considerably less. In fact, uh, by Friday, only about 10,000 car passes had been asked for. About 500 mayors out here uh, in front of the runway watching. 
Uh, our coverage of Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in a moment. Edwards Air Force Base. The astronauts on board are uh, Commander Vance Brand, 51 years old, the only veteran of space flight, uh, Colonel Robert Overmeyer, the uh, Marine Corps pilot, the Mission Specialist Joseph Allen, and Mission Specialist Bill Lenore. Those are the two men who attempted to uh, make the spacewalk yesterday and uh, unfortunately because of malfunctions in the space suits could not carry out that mission. Only four and a half minutes to go now before touchdown. Let's go back to the show at Houston. Lynn? Uh, Frank, I wanted to point out that when they come in, uh, Bill Lenore, I'm sorry, Joe Allen will be sitting behind the pilot and the commander up in the uh, flight deck, up in the cockpit as, uh, cockpit, as it were. Bill Lenore this time is down in what Joe Allen referred to as steerage. That's the extra seat. Now at Mach 9. Hey, we see it. At 46,000 feet and a range of 25 miles. Now, that's from a camera at, uh, at Edwards, Buckhorn, right? I'm not sure which camera that is, but it sure is nice yeah, to see it. It would be a double boom, uh, Gene. What, what accounts for that? Usually you get one boom. Well, the shape of the spacecraft is so blunt that you get uh, sonic booms off of different sections of the body. But, uh, you know, we didn't hear that this morning. I wonder if the cloud cover had quite a bit to do with that. She Does is that subsonic now. Could very well. Less and uh, that picture we saw you, was from a... Yes, sir. That picture we saw was from a chase plane, but we can't see it, Frank, because she's behind the clouds. Yeah. See, there it is. There it is. We, we did. There it is. Yes. It uh, was somewhat <laughs> subdued, but uh, she was long in coming this morning. So that should put it uh, just chase over us has, about here. Uh, video so of Columbia. We're seeing this picture now there you are. from a chase plane. And that picture is being taken from above the clouds, Frank. We do not see it from here, but we know just about where she is. That's going to be a sight when it comes through those clouds right down on top of you two out there. <laughs> it's going to it's gonna make a turn right out of the sunset, which is going to be spectacular. It may be difficult for us to see here until it gets almost on us, won't it, Gene, because of the cloud cover? It will. I think we'll see it break through right over here above that sunrise, Max. The good Columbia. thing we've got those chase planes up there. We wouldn't it see does it at help. all. Holding 1.6 Gs on the heading alignment circle. Now, they're, they're above what almost seems to them like a, a snow cover because uh, they have yet to see the ground. Uh, you expect them to see the ground knots. just shortly before landing? Well, at about 16,000 feet, which is as fast as they're going, is really very shortly before landing. Gentlemen, let me just make one... Uh, let me make just one more reminder here that everybody should realize, even though this is the fifth mission of the shuttle, it's now a glider. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't have another opportunity to go around. It's, it's got to make it on this landing. Point, These a very astronauts good point. are coming in now with no visual sighting of the, uh, of the landing strip. Gene, what kind of emergency procedures do they have here for the landing? Of course, the only emergency procedure they have is, a, have is a normal one, Max, and that's to come home and land at this stage of the game. Of course, there's no ejection seats. Uh, they are in a normal emergency, uh, all-encompassing mode right now. Okay, at this point, Four, everything looks good. 14,000. We ought to see it right under those clouds. Ground cameras now on the monitors in the center. She's coming through the clouds now, as you we can see. Right we do right have now. Here she is, Max. There she is. Here she is. She's kind of turning on the straightaway now, Frank. Beautifully yes, sunlit, reflecting the sun. No Look at that. We can see that reflection uh, that you see Very on a television bad. camera. Absolutely like a star coming in the land. Oh, here it comes. Unlike right you, at Frank, us this is my first one. This is just utterly fantastic. Frank, it's just glowing against the clouds. Uh, we're getting a picture head on. It's like, like a beautiful, beautiful star, bright star. Just right. coming right in at us. 5,000 feet. And it's going and to drop see very, very fast, too, isn't it, now? At this point. Yes, extremely fast. She is just absolutely gorgeous. It's here. 2,800 feet. As you can see. There she goes. With a chase plane leading. 289 miles. What a sight. Just beautiful. Really kind. You still get the feeling this is an airport with an ordinary commercial jet landing. Gear is down. But we know that. You can tell the crowd is holding their breath at this point. Gear is down. About ready for touchdown. 
There she is. Touchdown and a roar goes up here. And the dawn is breaking. The sun Unofficial is touchdown away. time was five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. Magnificent. How'd you like that, Mac? Oh, I, 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 that is indescribable. <laughs> Frank, it's almost like matter of fact. They said touchdown time, five days, some odd minutes. And touchdown time again. Of five course, Gene, uh, it will stop, and about 30 minutes later, it will be off the broadcast. We will uh, have the astronauts coming out of the shuttle, and of course, we'll have all that on World News tonight. Doesn't look too beat up, does she, the old uh, bird? No, but she deserves a rest. She's going to go in and, uh, I guess, maybe get a facelift for uh, the flight next year. Yes. Yeah, what kind of changes will be made there, Gene? Pardon? What kind of overhaul will be done with the Columbia? Well, they'll take out the ejection seat, a lot of flight instrumentation they use for the test flight. Uh, they'll reconfigure it for the European Space Lab that she's going to carry as a payload. There it is. They're going to they're going to give it more capability. By fuel cells, give it more electrical power, increase the capability to carry six passengers or six crewmen, really. Adding the galley. Well, you need more food when you get right. that many people. Of course, oh, they the certain tiles will be replaced, uh, as always. And, of course, uh, she's been in business and service now for over a year, and they well, need to upgrade her. Upgrading the shuttle engines, as you would do on any aircraft that had used uh, its engines. Uh, it, it, it's a, it's a, she's a proud lady, Frank. Uh, Max uh, Lynn sitting out here in the daylight and the sunrise. Gene, let's look at it again. Let's, uh, let's get a replay of the landing of STS-5, Columbia, as she came in on this wonderful morning, the clouds didn't seem to matter very much. Just a beautiful approach, no problems at all. The, the sunrise, the early morning sunrise, puts a whole new dimension. Now remember, these gentlemen did not see the see Edwards until they were turning into that final phase of the landing. Uh, so they were down the, hardly before, uh, just a few seconds as a matter of fact, you're ex talking about. Exactly. It didn't seem to matter very much though because Vance made a beautiful landing. Uh, the shuttle has, has performed, I believe, beyond what people expected it to. Uh, Max, certainly beyond what I really ever dreamed of myself. I knew it would work. But... What, what do you see in terms of uh, future for shuttle? Of course, we start with the Challenger. In January, the first flight of the Challenger, which is uh, an operational vehicle, and I understand it can carry a lot more tonnage. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna be upgraded. Here's a new replay of it coming straight in. Cloud cover in the background. There's something majestic about her. You can feel her presence yes. as she, she descends upon you. And the interesting thing, of course, the descent is extremely steep, almost falling like a rock. Some people compared it to, but it certainly doesn't look anything like a rock there. There come the landing gear, and the landing gear this time uh, were probably about 200 feet above the uh, surface of the ground. There was hardly any wind out here at all, Max. It was perhaps a perfect morning. You can see a little contrails, a little moisture coming off the wingtips this morning. As a matter of fact, they haven't been able to test what crosswinds would do uh, to the shuttle when it lands. In fact, they need to do that, don't they, at the time in the future. There it is, STS-5. Landing here at Edwards Air Force Base on runway 22, the concrete runway. Frank? Thank you, Max, and thank you, Gene. So, Columbia, the space shuttle, has ended her fifth flight. There have been three this year. Columbia will now get a rest, and uh, will not be put back into uh, operation again until uh, the fall of next year. But there will be uh, 12 flights, five shuttle flights next year, I should say, and then 12 in 1984, and 16 scheduled in 1985. So, believe it or not, one day, this sort of thing will become routine. Not, I suspect, to anybody who's ever watched it actually take off or land. Vance Brand, Bob Overmeyer, Joe Allen, and Bill Lenore are down. They are safe. They have accomplished their mission. Columbia is home once again at Edwards Air Force Base. For Max Robinson and Gene Cernan and Lynn Scher in Houston, this is Frank Reynolds. We'll have a complete report on the landing of Columbia on ABC's World News tonight. Goodbye for now. Further details on Columbia's fifth mission this evening at the dinner hour on ABC's World News Tonight. Live coverage of today's space shuttle landing has been a special events presentation of ABC News.
space, but the first light of dawn over the California desert also revealed the worst cloud cover yet for a shuttle landing. Solid clouds from 13,000 feet all the way up to 33,000 feet. Chase planes caught the first glimpse of Columbia, but from the ground, nothing. At that point, not even the characteristic double sonic boom. Then suddenly, we heard Columbia. Yeah. There it is. There it is. We, we did. There it is. Yes. It uh, was somewhat <laughs> subdued, but uh, she was long in coming this morning. NASA says the unusual 20,000 foot thick clouds delayed the boom and muffled it. But the sunlight below more than made up for that when Columbia finally came into view. It's just glowing against the clouds. Uh, we're getting a picture head on. It's like, like a beautiful, beautiful star, bright star. Just right. coming right in at us. Because of the clouds, the astronauts didn't see their 15,000 foot long concrete runway until the last few seconds. But with instrument precision, they guided Columbia home to a letter perfect landing. Unofficial touchdown time was five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. Then as Columbia rolled to a stop on runway 22, a lighter note from Mission Commander Vance Brand. Hey, uh, Roy, are we down now? That was, uh, are we on the ground? Absolutely. It was beautiful, and you certainly lived up to your motto this flight. Welcome home. Yes, sir. We deliver. And that's exactly what Columbia's crew had done, delivering two commercial satellites into orbit during the mission and bringing home the shuttle with less apparent damage to the critical heat tiles than on any previous flight. NASA says only a couple of tiles appear damaged. Then the astronauts were taken into NASA's medical trailers for initial exams and a quick shower. And before heading for Houston, comments from the crew perhaps best summarized by one thought from mission specialist Joe Allen. We're very happy to be back home on Earth again. Thank you. Then a moment to assess the mission and the future of the shuttle program with former astronaut Gene Cernan. Max, a major plus in my estimation is the fact that uh, the shuttle has flown five times, uh, performed beyond what certainly many people, in, including myself, believed uh, was its capability. Uh, secondly, of course, we now have a commercial venture going. We've launched two commercial satellites in orbit on this flight. Uh, the drawback or the minus uh, of this particular flight is the fact that we did not get that extravehicular activity or that spacewalk, uh, which effectively, effectively extends the shuttle's capability through the use of man. The next major step from the shuttle program occurs tomorrow at midnight, some 3,000 miles from here in California. The Challenger, America's second space shuttle, will be moved into the vehicle assembly building at Cape Canaveral, and preparations will begin for its first flight, now set for some time between late January and early February. As for the Columbia, it will be overhauled and modified over the better part of next year. It's scheduled to fly again in October of 1983.